among you today, tonight will agree with me that we need wisdom in life. So we need wisdom in life. We need wisdom when it comes to decision-making. Amen? To decide whether it is the good, the better, or the best. Remember, we want the best, right? So we need wisdom in decision-making. We need wisdom in our relationships. We need wisdom in solving problems and sol making solutions. We need wisdom in life. And there is, wisdom is available. We can see that so Psalm 9:10. Can we open our Bibles in Psalm 9:10? And it says there that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So New Living Translation it says the fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom, knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. So the fear of the Lord so, wisdom comes from the fear of the Lord. Amen? So, for us to have wisdom in our lives, we have to have the fear of the Lord. So, what is the fear of the Lord? We hear this all the time. We pray this all the time. Fear of the Lord. God, give me the fear of the Lord. I want to have the fear of the Lord. Pero ano ba talaga yung fear of the Lord? Do you want to know? Do you want to have wisdom? Amen. So what is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is not to be scared of God because, again, you cannot be scared of someone that you want to be intimate with. So hindi, ka, hindi pwedeng yung mat, matakot ka tapos also intimacy. It won't work, right? Our relationship with God is a relationship of intimacy, of, you know, like a lover. So you cannot love someone that you're scared of. Right? So God doesn't want us to be scared of Him, but God wants to have an intimate relationship with us, to have relationship with you and me. So I want just to lay a foundation. We were just singing kanina, God is a good God. He is. Amen? So I want to lay that foundation. God is good. He loves you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. He wants you to, to have, you know, a very close relationship with Him. God desires intimacy. So in an intimate relationship, diba, it's like a relationship between, between a husband and a wife. Sino dito, kasal ka na. You have a husband, you have a wife. Ayan, praise the Lord. And there's so much. Pag hindi mo pa siya asawa, medyo you know that person from afar. Pero if asawa mo na siya, you have an intimate relationship, you know them every detail of their life, Right? You know their secrets, you know their desires, you know what they like, what they don't like. Amen? So you, pag sinabing intimate relationship, ganun din between you and God. You can have that kind of relationship where you know what God wants and you hate what He hates. Where you have this relationship, you know His secrets. And that is yung desire ng Lord para sa atin. So let's open our Bibles to James 4. James chapter 4, verse 8. Sabi nga nun, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Pero it, it, in the previous verse, sabi nga nun sa verse 5, Do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy? So God is jealous about you. God wants na siya lang, the only person sa buhay mo. Siya yung number one. So there's, you know, He yearns for you. He wants to be intimate with you. He wants to share to you the secrets of His heart. Pero sabi nga nun, that we are to, to draw near and He will draw near to us. Ibig sabihin nun, there is tayo. It is up to us. It depends on us. It, we determine kung gaano tayo magiging close kay God. Do you want just to know Him afar off? You know, just, you know, I know He's a good God. He answers my prayers. He heals the sick, you know. I know Him just like that. Gusto nyo ba hanggang dun lang? Pero that's not God's desire. God's desire for us is that we know the secrets of His heart. So to know the secrets of His heart, we are to fear Him. So we can see that sa lives ng, ni Moses at the Israelites. So I have a question. Why did God brought the Israelites out of Egypt? What was the reason?
Hindi ko masyadong marinig eh. I'll just answer the question na lang. So, sabi ganon, we can see that sa Exodus 7.16. This is the reason why God wanted the Israelites to be out of Egypt. This is the first reason. Then, ito sabi ng Lord sa Pharaoh through Moses, Then announced to, to them, The Lord, the God of Hebrews, has sent me to tell you, Let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. So they can worship me in the wilderness. It wasn't really about the promised land, but it was about worship. It was about being intimate. Worship is giving someone the worth, the do, the the worthship. So God wants to take each uh, the Israelites out of Egypt so that the Israelites can know God, that they would have a close relationship with Him. It wasn't really about the promise, but it's about being in relationship with God, just like, di ba? The Israelites is like a picture of us being born again. God took us out of darkness into His light not to answer your prayers, not to give you a good life, not to meet all your needs. That's not the main reason. He took us out of darkness into light because He wants to have relationship. Sabihin nga natin, relationship. So if we get into relationship, Na ang ating, you know, thinking is, I'm gonna be in this relationship because he's gonna answer my needs. He's he's gonna be like a genie where, you know, when I'm scared, I run to him. When I need provision, when I need protection, I run to him. That's not a good way to enter into a relationship. It's like a woman marrying a rich man just for his money, not for love. And sadly, this is how yung relationship ng Israel to God. He, they only think as God as someone who will provide their needs, protect them, give them what they, they need. But Moses had a different relationship. So God's desire to take the Israelites out of Egypt so that they might worship Him, so that they would know Him, God did not bring them straight to the promised land. God's purpose was to reveal Himself to His people first before they experience the promise. So the Israelites, diba? As we remember in Egypt, they, they were slaves for years. They had a hard life, a difficult life. They strive, they, you know, they were beaten, they were poorly treated. But Moses, in the other hand naman, he lived a good life, di ba? He was the grandson of the richest man in the world, the most powerful man in the world. So he had the best car, he had the best clothes, he had the best food, the house. You know, it was a great life. Pero the Israelites, isipin mo yun, they were took out of Egypt. And when they are, were out of Egypt na, they, were, they always said, paulit ulit it was better for us in Egypt. Why did you bring us here? Bring us back to Egypt. They had a hard life in Egypt. Pero they wanted to go back. Moses, he had a good life, but you never heard from him, I want to go back to Egypt. You know why? Because of that encounter in the bush. He had an encounter with God that changed his heart and made him say, God is better than anything in the world, anything that the world can offer. He's better. So that's what happened between the Israelites. So God took the Israelites out of Egypt and He was like, okay, I want to show myself to you. Sabi niya kay Moses, so in three days, sabihin mo sa Israelites, bababa ako. I will reveal myself to the Israelites. And what happened was, and Mount Sinai, God revealed Himself through thunder and lightning. And you know what the Israelites did? They ran away. They stood back. 
Instead of falling down and worshiping, instead of like, wow, this is the great God that we serve. This is the God who took us out of Egypt. They didn't want anything to do with that God. They said, Moses, ikaw na lang makipag-usap sa kanya. You know, sabihan mo na lang kami kung anong sinabi ni God. That wasn't God's desire. God's desire was the Israelites to have the same kind of relationship as Moses did. Exodus 20.20, sabi ng ni Moses to the people, Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that His fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that His fear may be before you. And sadly, yung fear na yon, the fear of the Lord in their hearts, was not there. And sadly, that generation, that Israelite generation, that went out of Egypt and into the wilderness, that generation died. They did not reach yung fullest plan, yung destiny ng Lord para sa kanila. They fall short of that destiny. And ganun din sa atin. If we enter into this relationship with God thinking that God is just a God who will answer your needs, you know, when you pray, He will, he will do all these kinds of stuff for you. You're having this relationship, this heart sa Kanya in the wrong place. What would happen to us is we will not fulfill the fullest plan ng Lord sa atin. We will die in the wilderness. We will not enter into the promise. God wants us to enter into the promise. But to enter the promised land to that fullness, there has to be that fear of the Lord in our hearts. Sabihin nga natin, fear of the Lord. So what is the fear of the Lord? Number one, the fear of the Lord is to be terrified to be away from Him. You're not scared na dahil, you know, you're scared because you're traumatized or you're like, oh no. But it's scared in a good way. Terrified in a good way. Na you don't want even one second na hindi mo marinig yung boses niya. Even one day na hindi mo siya nakausap. Kasi alam mo, he's the one that will give you wisdom for the day. He's the one that will give you strength for the day. He's the one who will correct you and guide you and teach you. Amen? So you're terrified now you don't get to spend time with him. It's like between a lover. Sino dito nung lalo na nung nagde-date pa lang kayo ng magiging asawa mo. You know you you do everything that you can do para hindi siya mawala sa buhay mo, right? You know, bibigay mo sa kanya yung mga gusto niya, yung chocolates, kung mahilig sa chocolates, kung mahilig siya sa pizza, sa burger, bibilhan mo siya. You know, magiging mabait ka talaga para hindi siya lumayo sa'yo or may wala sa piling mo, right? Ganun din between you and God. You're terrified na you malayo ka sa kanya. Amen? You're terrified na maputol yung relationship niyo. So, the fear of the Lord is to be terrified to be away from Him. Second is, the fear of the Lord is to venerate Him. Venerate is a big word. Venerate means we honor, we respect, we revere, we stand in awe of Him. It means that we love what He loves and we hate what He hates. It means what's important to God is important to us. What's not that important to God is not that important to us. It's to be scared to be away from Him and we take on His heart. Kung ano yung puso niya, yun din yung puso natin. Sabi sa Hebrews 1.9, this is the heart of God. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. This is talking about Jesus. Therefore, God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Not only that God wants us to love righteousness, everybody, I think, I believe, all the Christian, you want to 
you love righteousness, you want to please God, you want to walk in righteousness and holiness. Pero kulang yun. We also have to hate sin or hate evil. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. We are not to hate the sinner, not the person, but the sin. To have that holy anger. Na no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fall into that. Even just a little bit, I'm not going to do it. Sometimes we have this idea na merong maliit na sin at may malaking sin. We think na lying, stealing is just, you know, petty sins. And then we think about immorality or murder. Those are big sins. But really, every sin is just the same. Every sin results in death. So we are to love righteousness and hate sin. Hate evil. And that is the fear of the Lord in our hearts. Knowing what is His heart. The fear of the Lord is to venerate Him, to give Him the utmost respect and honor. So we do not take God and the things of God lightly. Ibig sabihin, we do not, you know, we're, we, hindi natin minawalang bahala si God at yung mga ukol or tungkol kay God. Amen? So, sabi nga nun sa Leviticus 10, this is an example that God did para mag-create ng fear of the Lord in the hearts of the people. Sabi sa Leviticus 10, verse 1, this is talking about um, the Levites. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took censer and put fire in it put incense on it and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. So what happened here is itong mga Levites, you know, dahil... You know, this is part of their life. Every day, pasok, labas sila sa temple, nag offer sila sa Lord. Naging common na lang sa kanila. Naging, you know, parang hindi na holy. Parang ritual na lang. Well, they don't really give, you know, the respect or the honor. They don't give weight to what they do. And what happened was, sabi ganun, they they gave profane fire. Profane means... Profane means is to treat something sacred with irreverence and disrespect. So, pumasok sila sa presensya ng Lord with irreverence and disrespect. You know what happened to them? Fire devoured them. Fire killed them. They were dead instantly. And because of that, the fear of the Lord came in the hearts of the people. They remembered, God is a holy God. I have to give Him honor. I have to give Him respect. Do you wonder sometimes when you come into the presence of the Lord sa, sa personal time mo, devotional time, sa bahay or even sa church, sometimes hindi ka makapasok sa presensya ng Lord. Who can relate? You know, you're like, you're doing everything. You're just singing. You're, you're basta, ginagawa mo lahat. Hindi ka makapasok. Hindi mo maramdaman yung presensya ng Lord. Pag ganun yung nangyari, check your heart. How's my reverence before God? Do I stand in awe of Him pa rin? Or do I just come in lightly? You know, I church, I reading the Bible, I praying. Remember the Lord's Prayer? What is the first part of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We always have to come into the presence of God with that sense of awe, that sense of reverence. Another example. In the book of Acts, 
4 and 5. I'll just kakwento ko na lang. Medyo mahaba. So this is the time that in the book of Acts, they, will, they were celebrating the goodness of God. And everybody was just giving sacrificially. And then there was this one person. Binenta niya yung, yung lupa niya. At yung lupa na yun, sabi natin, it cost 6,000 6, pesos. At yung buong 6,000 pesos na yun, binigay niya sa Lord. You know, just sacrificially, out of his heart. He just wants to, to give to the Lord. And then, all of a sudden, itong mag-asawa, si Ananias and Sapphira, they heard about it. Narinig nila itong tao na to, nagbigay ng 6 million. And sabi nila, ay tayo din, may lupa din tayo, benta din natin. Sabihin natin, 6 million din yung cost ng land. So, 6 million na binenta nila. And the thought is, gusto nila ibigay sa Lord. Pero, they held a part of it back. So, sabihin natin, yung part of it, 2, two million sa kanila. Tig isang million sila. Yung 4 million sa church. So, they, they lay, laid it sa church. They gave it to the church. Tinanong sila ni Peter, is this all that, ng, ng, ito yung buong amount na binenta niyo yung lupa, una dumating yung asawa, yung lalaki. Sabi ng lalaki, yes, yan, para sa Lord, lahat yan. You know what happened to him? He died instantly. They dragged him out of the church, put him aside. Three hours later, his wife comes in with the same amount, you know, siguro tig, two million sila. Two million. Binigay niya sa feet. Ito yung kalahati pa, nung, nung part ng land. Buo yan. You know what happened to her? She died also instantly, both of them. And because of that event, sa book of Acts, we can read sa Acts 5 verse 11, So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And the fear of the Lord came upon that church. They remembered that you cannot fool God. You cannot take the things of God lightly. There's nothing that you can hide from God. And we have to hear these things. We have to know these things. Because sometimes we forget, right? And hearing these things create the fear of the Lord in our hearts. Na, oo nga pala, the God that I serve is holy, is righteous. And sabi niya, those who come near me must be holy, must be righteous. Amen? So third... What third way or, or manifestation of the fear of the Lord in our hearts is that we tremble at His Word. We give importance to His Word. That we obey Him instantly. So, magkadugtong, we tremble at His Word and we obey. We obey. We obey even if it doesn't make sense. Sino dito? You know, God told you something na, okay, I want you to get up 2 a.m. in the morning, spend time with me. For you, it doesn't make sense. Kasi, Lord, pwede naman mama yung mga seven, yung medyo nakatulog na ako. It doesn't make sense. Pero even if it doesn't make sense, you still get up 2 in the morning and you pray. You obey even if it hurts. Ibig sabihin, you know, Hindi madali para sa'yo. Sometimes God would tell us, you know, let go of this person. Tama na yung relationship mo dito sa tao na to. Even if it hurts, we obey. Kasi we fear God. If we obey even if we don't see a benefit. Sometimes, we obey because we know what will be the outcome, right? Sometimes. Who can be honest with me today? We obey kasi alam natin may benefit eh. Pero, the fear of the Lord is to obey even if you don't see the benefit. It's, it doesn't make sense. You obey unto completion. Because, half-hearted obedience is still disobedience. You obey the halfway Hindi mo tinapos, it's still disobedience. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, 
Because, sabi sa Psalm 25, 14, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. Who do we tell our secrets to? Do we tell our secrets to someone just passing by? Or yung katabi mo ngayon sa church? Or yung nasa likod mo? No, right? We tell our secrets to someone who is very close to us. Who is intimate with us. Sabi ng Lord, the secrets of the Lord are those to those who, are, who fear Him. Do you want to know the secrets of God? Do you want to know the next step, even hindi mo pa na, na, hindi pa nangyayari, alam mo na yung magiging outcome? Do you want to know what God is gonna do tomorrow or the next month, the next week? We can know actually. But it is only for those that fear Him, that are intimate with Him. In the Bible, there's a guy that we know was called the friend of God. He is Abraham. And diba, we remember Abraham. He feared the Lord. God gave him a son, his promised son. And that promised son, Isaac, God asked him to sacrifice. And you know what he did? He obeyed. He obeyed immediately. Sabi nga sa Exodus 22 that he rose up. He went, gumising siya ng maaga at nagpunta sila agad. He, he didn't delay. He obeyed even if it doesn't make sense. Kasi di ba, it doesn't make sense. God just gave Isaac to him and God said Isaac will be, you know, the heir. And, and through Isaac, you know, your descendants will be like sand and the Caesar and all that. It doesn't make sense. Pero he still obeyed. He obeyed even if it hurts the only son. Masakit yun. Anak mo yun eh. He obeyed even if it doesn't know the benefit, the outcome. And he obeyed unto completion. Kasi he was really gonna kill his son. He wasn't saying, okay God, where are you? I'm ready to kill my son. Okay, stop me, please. No, he wasn't like that. He was like, just really gonna kill his son. And an angel appeared and stopped him. Sabi no angel, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me, then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide, as it is this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The Lord will provide Jehovah Jireh. God provides. God revealed to Abraham a part of him, a character of him that was never been revealed before. That was the first time that God was called Jehovah Jireh, God who provides. Because Abraham feared God, he learned another something new about God. God revealed to him a part of his heart that no one knew before because he is a friend of God, because he fears God. Psalm 103, going back to Moses and Israel, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. Israel only knew God by how he answered their prayers. But Moses, he already knew what God was going to do even before God did it. Because he is a friend of God. Because he feared God. Do you want to have that kind of relationship with God? We do, right? Then we are to fear him. John 15, 15 
Sabi ganun, No longer do I call you servants, for servants does not know what his master is doing. But I have called your friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. A, a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But the friend knows. Do you want to level up from your relationship with God between a servant and a master to a friend, friend to friend? Gusto mo natin yun? Now, we are not only servants na we just, you know, susunod lang tayo kung kailan tayo sabihin ni Lord, okay, this is the way to go, this is how you do it. But you really don't know what's the reason behind it or what is the purpose for that. That's, ganyan na na servant, di ba? Pero a friend, sabihin niya sa'yo, okay, gagawin natin to kasi ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Right? Sabi ng Lord, there's that kind of relationship. You can be, yung relationship with God can be a servant and master or your relationship with God can be friend to friend. We can see it in the lives of the people in the Bible. Abraham, Moses, David, Daniel, all these people. A friend knows the heart of his friend or the heart of the Father. And sabi sa John 15, 4, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. There's that obedience again. There's that fear of the Lord again. You want to know the secrets of God's heart? Do you want to know the next step? Do you want to know how your business will thrive? Do you want to know how your kids will walk in the fear of the Lord? Do you want to know, you know, what will happen tomorrow or later today? You can know. But it starts with having the fear of the Lord in our hearts because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is a close relationship with God. That you love what He loves, you hate what He hates. So again, the fear of the Lord, number one, is to be terrified to be away, away from Him. Number two, the fear of the Lord is to venerate Him, give Him the utmost respect, honor, to love what He loves and hate what He hates. Number three is to tremble at His word. And number four is to obey Him. So I pray tonight that this just stirs up your heart. I don't want to be just a servant. I want to be a friend of God. Not all of us are called the friends of God. There's that level. And we have, we have to have that godly jealousy that, yes, God, I want to have that kind of a relationship with you. At a friend to friend.